Pumps are said to be geometrically similar if they have various characteristics which are the same. This could be the number of impeller blades, the angle of the blades, the ratio of impeller to diameter pump casing, and various other things. In order to determine whether a pump is geometrically similar or not, a constant ns is derived such that the di dimensionless relationship, as presented here, is constant for these pumps. If we think of this in terms of a specific pump, and we change either a flow rate by changing the pump speed, we change the impeller blade size or some other functions, we then led to a set of infinity laws. For a specific pump, we'll end up with three of these laws. So these relate the Q for pump 1 divided by Q of pump 2 as it's equal to the N or the speed of pump 1 divided by the speed of pump 2 multiplied by the diameter of pump 1 over pump 2. In a similar way, we can get the head relationship between pump 1 and pump 2, as well as the power relationship between pump 1 or 2. This is for a specific pump if we change something about that specific pump. In the same way, if we use that previous equation, so that was the NS equation, we can find a similar set of equations for a family of geometrically similar pumps. So this is if the NS value is the same from one pump to another, we will again have a second set of equations as here. As I said, this is for a specific pump or a family of pumps, and this is going to relate Q, H, and P. The specific pump is fairly easy. It's just N on N, D on D. The second one is squared, and the third one is cubed. Please note, when it's a family of pumps, the power values are not the same. In order to use these relationships, we are still going to need a pump curve from the manufacturer. From this pump curve, we are going to have the pump curve that we are interested in. So I'm just using this one as an example. It's a six inch impeller on this pump. We are then going to want to have our pump curve onto our system curve rather on top of this, and we will find our operating point. If we have to change this pump to let's just say a six and a half inch pump, and for now we did not have this second curve, so we don't have the second curve, let's just assume. So we want to change this six inch pump to six and a half inch pump. We can now use the infinity laws. So in order to do that, we are going to take the original six inch curve and decide on several points along this curve. From these points, we can read off a Q value and we can read off an H value. So we are going to then set up a table of Q1 and sorry, let's do this. Yeah, Q1 and H1. So our first point is somewhere around 10, and our second value is somewhere around 40. Okay, so we will now look at several points along here for our Q1 and our H1 values. So I've completed the table there for Q1 and H1. What we now want to do is we want to convert those Q1 and H1 values into Q2 and H2 values so that we can get a new pump curve for this new pump that we are going to be working towards. In order to do that, we're going to be using the affinity laws that we had from earlier. And in particular, the set of equations that we had for a specific pump. In this instance, we are interested in Q1 and Q2. So we don't need to worry at this instance about the power curves. The way we are now going to do this is we are going to start by looking at the Q values. So Q1 on Q2 is equal to N1 on N2 multiplied by D1 on D2. In this instance, we are changing the 6-inch pump to a 6.5-inch pump. We are not changing the speed, so N1 and N2 will stay the same, so they will fall away. D1 and D2 will become 6 and 6.5-inch and respectively. We are wanting to get Q2, so we'll rearrange this equation. So Q2 is equal to Q1, so we'll take that across, and we will multiply that by D2 on D1. So for each of the values we now have for Q1, we will take the Q1 value and we'll substitute it into this equation, multiplied by the 6 versus 6.5 inch for the D2 and D1 values, and we will write this as Q2 for each of the values we have in this table. In a similar way, we can convert the H values through the H1, H2 equation. 
So the H1, H2, again the N1, N2 are going to fall away because of the same speed. We will then convert H1s into H2 values. This time we will take D1, D2 and we will take the square of this. Once we've got these Q2 and H2 values from our specific pump equations as to the bottom right, we can now go back to our original graph and we can draw these new Q2, H2 values on the graph. Please remember we don't have the six and a half inch line here because we're pretending we didn't have it. You can then join the points and then from that we can see where the new point is, our new operating point is, where this new pump curve intersects with the system curve. Please just also be aware that you might get an example where we change both the speed, so the n value, as well as the diameter. So if this is the case, you'll need to take into account both the difference in the speed from N1 to N2 as well as the diameter from the different pumps.